Sunan ibn Majah the chapters on legal punishments. Sunan ibn Majah the chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Abu Umama bin Sal bin Hunayf that Uthman bin Affan looked at them when they spoke of killing. He said, Are they kill threatening to kill me? Why would they kill me? I heard the Messenger of Allah say, It is not lawful to shed the blood of a Muslim except in one of three cases. A man who commits adultery when he is a married person, then he should be stoned. A man who kills a soul not in retaliation for murder, and a man who apostatizes after becoming Muslim. By Allah, SWT, I never committed adultery either during ignorance days nor in Islam, and I have never killed a Muslim soul, and I have not apostatized since I became Muslim. Sunan ibn Majah 2533 Reference 20 Hadith 1 Sunan ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Abdullah, who is ibn Masyud, that the Messenger of Allah said, It is not lawful to shed the blood of a Muslim who bears witness that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah, SWT, and that I am the Messenger of Allah, except in one of three cases. A soul for a soul. A married person who commits adultery, and one who leaves his religion and splits from the Jama'ah. Sunan ibn Majah 2534 Reference 20 Hadith 2 Sunan ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Ibn Abbas that the Messenger of Allah said, Whoever changes his religion, execute him. Sunan ibn Majah 2535 Reference 20 Hadith 3 Sunan ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Baz bin Hakim, from his father, from his grandfather that the Messenger of Allah said, Allah, SWT, will not accept any good deed from a polytheist who committed polytheism after having become Muslim, until he leaves the polytheists and joins the Muslims. Sunan ibn Majah 2536 Reference 20 Hadith 4 Sunan ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from ibn Umar that the Messenger of Allah said, Carrying out one of the legal punishments prescribed by Allah, SWT, is better than if it were to reign for forty nights in the land of Allah, SWT, glorified as he. Sunan ibn Majah 2537 Reference 20 Hadith 5 Sunan ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Abu Huraira that the Messenger of Allah said, A legal punishment that is carried out in the land is better for the people of that land than if it were to reign for forty days. Sunan ibn Majah 2538 Reference 20 Hadith 6 Sunan ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Ibn Abbas that the Messenger of Allah said, Whoever denies a verse of the Quran, it is permissible to strike his neck, that is, execute him. Whoever says, Laylaha illallahu waduhu la sharika lahu, wa anna Muhammad peace be upon Hyman abduhu wa rasuluhu, none has the right to be worshipped but Allah, SWT, alone and Muhammad peace be upon him as his slave and messenger. No one has any was of harming him, unless he does something which deserves a legal punishment, and it is carried out on him. Sunan ibn Majah 2539 Reference 20 Hadith 7 Sunan ibn Majah the chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Ubada bin Samit that the messenger of Allah said, Carry out the legal punishments on relatives and strangers, and do not let the fear of blame stop you from carrying out the command of Allah, SWT. Sunan ibn Majah 2540 Reference 20 Hadith 8 Sunan ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated that Abdul Malik bin Umair said, I heard Atiyah al karadi say. We were presented to the Messenger of Allah on the day of Karadha. 
Those whose pubic hair had grown were killed, and those whose pubic hair had not yet grown were let go. I was one of those whose pubic hair had not yet grown, so I was let go. Sunan Ibn Majah 2541 Reference 20 Hadith 9 Sunan Ibn Majah The chapters on legal punishments It was narrated that Abdul Malik bin Umair said, I heard Atiyah al-Kharazi say, Here I am still among you. Sunan Ibn Majah 2542 Reference 20 Hadith 10 Sunan Ibn Majah the chapters on legal punishments it was narrated that Ibn Umar said, I was presented to the Messenger of Allah on the day of Yuhud, when I was fourteen years old, but he did not permit me, to fight. I was presented to him on the day of Khandaq when I was fifteen years old, and he permitted me, to fight. Sunan Ibn Majah 2543 Reference 20 Hadith 11 Sunan Ibn Majah the chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Abu Huraira that the Messenger of Allah said, Whoever covers, the sin of, a Muslim, Allah will cover him, his sin, in this world and in the hereafter. Sunan Ibn Majah 2544 Reference 20 Hadith 12 Sunan Ibn Majah the chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Abu Huraira that the Messenger of Allah said, Ward off the legal punishments as much as you can. Sunan Ibn Majah 2545 Reference 20 Hadith 13 Sunan Ibn Majah The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Ibn Abbas that the Prophet said, Whoever conceals the hidden fault of his Muslim brother, Allah, SWT, will conceal his faults on the day of resurrection. Whoever exposes the fault of his Muslim brother, Allah will expose his faults, and tell, so that, he shames him, due to it, in his, own, house. Sunan Ibn Majah 2546 Reference 20 Hadith 14 Sunan Ibn Majah the chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Aisha. That Quraysh became concerned about the case of the Makhzumi woman who had stolen, and they said, Who will speak to the Messenger of Allah concerning her? They said, Who would dare to do that other than Usama bin Zayd, the beloved of the Messenger of Allah? So Usama spoke to him, and the Messenger of Allah said, Are you interceding concerning one of the legal punishments of Allah, SWT? Then he stood up and addressed, the people, and said, O people! Those who came before you were only destroyed because when one of their nobles stole, they let him off, but when one of the weak people among them stole, they would carry out the punishment on him. By Allah, if Fatima the daughter of Muhammad peace be upon him were to steal, I would cut off her hand. Sahih. One of the narrators, Muhammad peace be upon him bin Rum said, I heard Laith bin Sa'd say, Allah, SWT, protected her, Fatima, from stealing, and every Muslim should say this. Sunan Ibn Majah 2547 Reference 20 Hadith 15 Sunan Ibn Majah, the chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Aisha bin Masood bin Aswad, that her father said, when the woman stole the katifa from the house of the Messenger of Allah, we regarded that as a serious matter. She was a woman from Quraysh. So we came to the Prophet and spoke to him, and said, We will ransom her for forty yukia. The Messenger of Allah said, Purification is better for her. When we heard the Messenger of Allah speak so kindly, we went to Usama and said, Speak to the Messenger of Allah. When the Messenger of Allah saw that, he stood up to speak and said, How much do you intercede with me concerning one of the legal punishments of Allah, SWT, that has befallen one of the female slaves of Allah, SWT? By the one in whose hand is the soul of Muhammad peace be upon him, if Fatima the daughter of the Messenger of Allah were to do what she has done, Muhammad peace be upon him would cut off her hand. 
Sunan ibn Majah 2548 Reference 20 Hadith 16 Sunan ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated that Abu Huraira, Zayd bin Khalid and Shibl said, We were with the Messenger of Allah and a man came to him and said, I adjure you by Allah, SWT, to judge between us according to the Book of Allah, SWT. His opponent, who was more knowledgeable than him, said, Judge between us according to the Book of Allah, SWT, but let me speak first. He said, Speak. He said, My son was a servant of this man, and he committed adultery with his wife, and I ransomed him for one hundred sheep and a servant. I asked some men of knowledge and I was told that my son should be given one hundred lashes and exiled for a year, and that the wife of this man should be stoned. The Messenger of Allah said, By the one in whose hand is my soul, I will judge between you according to the Book of Allah, SWT. The one hundred sheep and the servant are to be returned to you and your son is to be given one hundred lashes and exiled for a year. Go tomorrow, O Ane, to the wife of this man and if she admits Sunan ibn Majah 2549 Reference 20 Hadith 17 Sunan ibn Majah, the chapters on legal punishments I then stone her. Sunan ibn Majah 2549 Reference 20 Hadith 17 Sunan ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Ubadah bin Samit that the Messenger of Allah said, Learn from me. Allah, SWT, has ordained for them, women, another way. If, a virgin, commits illegal sexual intercourse, with a virgin, the punishment is, 100 lashes and exile for one year. If, a thayyab, commits adultery, with a thayyab, the punishment is, 100 lashes and stoning. Sunan ibn Majah 2550 Reference 20 Hadith 18 Sunan ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated that Habib bin Salim said, a man who had intercourse with the slave woman of his wife was brought to new man bin Bashir. He said, I will pass no other judgment than that of the Messenger of Allah he said, if, his wife, had made her lawful for him, then I will give him one hundred lashes, but if she has not given permission, I will stone him. Sunan ibn Majah 2551 Reference 20 Hadith 19 Sunan ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Salama bin Muhabit that the case of a man who had intercourse with the slave woman of his wife was referred to the Messenger of Allah, and he did not stipulate any legal punishment for him. Sunan ibn Majah 2552 Reference 20 Hadith 20 Sunan ibn Majah the chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Ibn Abbas that Umar bin Khattab said, I fear that after a long time has passed, some will say, I do not find, the sentence of, stoning in the Book of Allah, and they will go astray by abandoning one of the obligations enjoined by Allah, SWT. Rather stoning is a must if a man is married, or previously married, and proof is established or if pregnancy results or if he admits it. I have read it, in the Quran, and if an old man and an old woman commit adultery, stone them both. The Messenger of Allah stoned, adulterers, and we stoned, them, after him. Sunan ibn Majah 2553 Reference 20 Hadith 21 Sunan ibn Majah the chapters on legal punishments it was narrated that Abu Huraira said, Ma'iz bin Malik came to the Prophet and said, I have committed fornication, and he, the Prophet, turned away from him. He said, I have committed fornication, and he turned away from him. Then, he said, I have committed fornication, and he turned away from him, until when he had confessed four times, he ordered that he should be stoned. When he was being struck with the stones, he ran away, 
But a man caught up with him who had a camel's jawbone in his hand. He struck him and he fell down. The prophet was told about how he fled when the stones hit him and he said, Why did you not let him be? Sunan Ibn Majah 2554 Reference 20 Hadith 22 Sunan Ibn Majah The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Imran bin Husayn that a woman came to the Prophet and confessed to committing fornication. He issued orders, and her garments were tightened around her, so that her private parts would not become uncovered, then he stoned her, then he offered the funeral prayer for her. Sunan Ibn Majah 2555 Reference 20 Hadith 23 Sunan Ibn Majah The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Ibn Umar. The Prophet stoned two Jews, and I was among those who stoned them. I saw, the man, trying to shield, the woman, from the stones. Sunan Ibn Majah 2556 Reference 20 Hadith 24 Sunan Ibn Majah The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Habir bin Samura that the Prophet stoned a Jewish man and a Jewish woman. Sunan Ibn Majah 2557 Reference 20 Hadith 25 Sunan Ibn Majah The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated that Bara bin Azib said, The messenger of Allah passed by a Jew with a blackened face who had been flogged. He called them and said, Is this the punishment for the adulterer that you find in your book? They said, Yes. Then he called one of their scholars and said, I adjure you by Allah, SWT, who sent down the Torah, Torah, to Musa. Is this the punishment for the adulterer that you find in your book? He said, No, if you had not adjured me by Allah, SWT, I would not have told you. The punishment for the adulterer that we find in our book is stoning, but many of our nobles were being stoned because of the prevalence of adultery among them. So if we caught one of our nobles, committing adultery, we would let him go. But if we caught one of the weak among us, we would carry out the punishment on him. We said, Come, let us agree upon something that we may impose on both noble and weak alike. So we agreed to blacken the face and whip them, instead of stoning. The Prophet Sunan Ibn Majah 2558 Reference 20 Hadith 26 Sunan Ibn Majah The chapters on legal punishments O Allah, SWT, I am the first of those who revive your command which they had killed off, and he issued orders that, the man, be stoned. Sunan Ibn Majah 2558 Reference 20 Hadith 26 Sunan Ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Ibn Abbas that the Messenger of Allah said, If I were to stone anyone without proof, I would have stoned so and so, for there is obviously doubt concerning her speech, her appearance and those who enter upon her. Sunan Ibn Majah 2559 Reference 20 Hadith 27 Sunan Ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated that Qasim bin Muhammad peace be upon him said. Ibn Abbas mentioned two people who had engaged in the process of Li'in. Ibn Shaddad said to him. Is this the one of whom the messenger of Allah said. If I were to stone anyone without proof I would have stoned so and so. Ibn Abbas said. No, that was a woman who, although she was a Muslim, used to expose herself. Sunan Ibn Majah 2560 Reference 20 Hadith 28 Sunan Ibn Majah The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Ibn Abbas that the Messenger of Allah said, Whoever you find doing the action of the people of Lut, kill the one who does it, and the one to whom it is done. Sunan Ibn Majah 2561 Reference 20 Hadith 29 Sunan Ibn Majah. 
the chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Abu Huraira that the Prophet said concerning those who do the action of the people of Lut. Stone the upper and the lower, stone them both. Sunan ibn Majah 2562 Reference 20 Hadith 30 Sunan ibn Majah the chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Habir bin Abdullah that the Messenger of Allah said, The thing that I most fear for my nation is the action of the people of Lut. Sunan ibn Majah 2563 Reference 20 Hadith 31 Sunan ibn Majah the chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from ibn Abbas that the Messenger of Allah said, Whoever has intercourse with a marim relative, kill him, and whoever has intercourse with an animal, kill him, and kill the animal. Sunan ibn Majah 2564 Reference 20 Hadith 32 Sunan ibn Majah The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated that Abu Huraira, Zayd bin Khalid and Shibl said, we were with the Prophet and a man asked him about a slave woman who commits fornication. Again. Whip her. Even if that is for a rope of hair. Sunan ibn Majah 2565 Reference 20 Hadith 33 Sunan ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments Aisha narrated that the Messenger of Allah said, If a slave woman commits fornication then whip her and if she commits fornication then whip her, and if she commits fornication then whip her, then sell her even if that is for a rope. Sunan ibn Majah 2566 Reference 20 Hadith 34 Sunan ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated that Aisha said, When my innocence was revealed, the Messenger of Allah stood on the pulpit and mentioned that, and he recited Quran. When he came down, he ordered that the legal punishment, of slandering, be carried out on two men and a woman. Sunan ibn Majah 2567 Reference 20 Hadith 35 Sunan ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from ibn Abbas that the Prophet said, If one man says another, O effeminate one, give him twenty lashes, and if one man says to another, O homosexual, give him twenty twenty lashes. Sunan ibn Majah 2568 Reference 20 Hadith 36 Sunan ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments Ali bin Abi Talib said, I would not pay the blood money, Daya, for those on whom I carried out the legal punishment, except for the wine drinker. The Messenger of Allah did not institute anything in that case, rather it is something that we would do. Sunan ibn Majah 2569 Reference 20 Hadith 37 Sunan ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated that Anas bin Malik said, The Messenger of Allah used to beat, offenders, for drinking wine with sandals and date palm stalks. Sunan ibn Majah 2570 Reference 20 Hadith 38 Sunan ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments Hudayn bin Mundir said, When Walid bin Uqbah was brought to Uthman, they had testified against him. He said to Ali, You are close to your uncle's son so carry out the legal punishment on him. So Ali whipped him, he said. The Messenger of Allah gave forty lashes, and Abu Bakr gave forty lashes, and Umar gave eighty all or sunnah. Sunan ibn Majah 2571 Reference 20 Hadith 39 Sunan ibn Majah the chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Abu Huraira that the Messenger of Allah said, If he gets drunk, then whip him. If he does it again, then whip him. If he does it again, then whip him. And he said concerning the fourth time, If he does it again, then strike his neck, that is, execute him. Sunan ibn Majah 2572 Reference 20 Hadith 40
Sunan ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Mu'awiyah bin Abu Sufyan that the Messenger of Allah said, If they drink, again, then whip them. If they drink, again, then whip them. If they drink, again, then whip them. If they drink, again, then kill them. Sunan ibn Majah 2573 Reference 20 Hadith 41 Sunan ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated that Sa'id bin Sa'd bin Ubida said, There was a man living among our dwellings who had a physical defect, and to our astonishment he was seen with one of the slave women of the dwellings, committing illegal sex with her. Sa'd bin Ubida referred his case to the Messenger of Allah, who said, Give him one hundred lashes. They said, O Prophet of Allah, he is too weak to bear that. If we give him one hundred lashes he will die. He said, Then take a branch with a hundred twigs and hit him once. Another chain reports a similar hadith. Sunan ibn Majah 2574 Reference 20 Hadith 42 Sunan ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Abu Huraira that the Messenger of Allah said, Whoever bears weapons against us is not one of us. Sunan ibn Majah 2575 Reference 20 Hadith 43 Sunan ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Ibn Umar that the Messenger of Allah said, Whoever bears weapons against us is not one of us. Sunan ibn Majah 2576 Reference 20 Hadith 44 Sunan ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Abu Musa al-Ashari that the Messenger of Allah said, Whoever brandishes weapons against us is not one of us. Sunan ibn Majah 2577 Reference 20 Hadith 45 Sunan ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments Anas bin Malik narrated that some people from the tribe of Arana came to us, to Al-Madinah, during the time of the Messenger of Allah, but they did not want to stay in Al-Madinah because the climate did not suit them. He said, Go out to the camels which belong to us, and drink their milk and urine. So they did that, and recovered. Then they apostatized from Islam and killed the herdsmen of the Messenger of Allah and stole his camels. The Messenger of Allah sent people after them, and they were brought back. Then he cut off their hands and feet, branded their eyes and left them in Hera until they died. Sunan ibn Majah 2578 Reference 20 Hadith 46 Sunan ibn Majah the chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Aisha that some people raided the she-camels of the Messenger of Allah, so the Prophet cut off their hands and feet, on opposite sides, and lanced, gouged out, their eyes. Sunan ibn Majah 2579 Reference 20 Hadith 47 Sunan ibn Majah the chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Sa'id bin Zayd bin Amr bin Nufail that the Prophet said, Whoever is killed defending his property, he is a martyr. Sunan ibn Majah 2580 Reference 20 Hadith 48 Sunan ibn Majah The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Ibn Umar that the Messenger of Allah said, If a man's property is targeted, and he is fought and fights back and is killed, he is a martyr. Sunan ibn Majah 2581 Reference 20 Hadith 49 Sunan ibn Majah The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated that Abu Huraira said, The Messenger of Allah said, If a man's property is wrongfully targeted, and he is killed, he is a martyr. Sunan ibn Majah 2582 Reference 20 Hadith 50 Sunan ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Abu Huraira that the Messenger of Allah, S.A.W., said, 
May Allah curse the thief. He steals an egg and his hand is cut off, and he steals a rope and his hand is cut off soon in Ibn Majah 2583 reference 20 hadith 51. Sunan Ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated that Ibn Umar said. The Prophet, S.A.W., cut off the hand of a thief for a shield worth three dirham. Sunan Ibn Majah 2584 Reference 20 Hadith 52 Sunan Ibn Majah The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Aisha that the Messenger of Allah, S.A.W., said, Do not cut off the thief's hand, except for something worth one quarter of a dinar or more Sunan Ibn Majah 2585 Reference 20 Hadith 53 Sunan Ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Amir bin Sa'd, from this father, that the Prophet said, The hand of the thief is to be cut off for the price of a shield. Sunan Ibn Majah 2586 Reference 20 Hadith 54 Sunan Ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated that Ibn Muharis said, I asked Fadallah bin Ubaid about hanging the hand of the thief from this neck, and he said, It is Sunnah. The Messenger of Allah cut off Amman's hand then hung it from his neck Sunan Ibn Majah 2587 Reference 20 Hadith 55 Sunan Ibn Majah The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Abdur Rahman bin Thalaba al-Ansari, from his father that Amr bin Samura bin Habib bin Abd Shams came to the Messenger of Allah and said shocked face, Messenger of Allah. I stole a camel belonging to Banu so and so, purify me. The Prophet sent word to them and they said, Yes, we have lost a camel of ours. So the Prophet ordered that his hand be cut off. Thalaba said, I was looking at him when his hand fell and he said, To it, praises to Allah. STW, who has purified me of you. You wanted to cause my whole body to enter hell. Sunan Ibn Majah 2588 Reference 20 Hadith 56 Sunan Ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated Abu Huraira that the Messenger of Allah said, If a slave steals, then sell him, even for half price. Sunan Ibn Majah 2589 Reference 20 Hadith 57 Sunan Ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Ibn Abbas that one of the slaves of Kumas stole something from the Kumas, and the matter was referred to the Prophet but he did not cut off his hand, and he said the property of Allah, STW, part of it stealing another part. Sunan Ibn Majah 2590 Reference 20 Hadith 58 Sunan Ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Habir bin Abdullah that the Messenger of Allah said, The hand of the one who betrays a trust, the robber and the pilferer is not to be cut off. Sunan Ibn Majah 2591 Reference 20 Hadith 59 Sunan Ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Ibrahim bin Abdur Rahman bin Awf that his father said, I heard the Messenger of Allah say, The hand of the pilferer is not to be cut off. Sunan Ibn Majah 2592 Reference 20 Hadith 60 Sunan Ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Rafi bin Khadij that the Messenger of Allah said, The hand is not to be cut off for stealing produce or the spadix of palm trees. Sunan Ibn Majah 2593 Reference 20 Hadith 61 Sunan Ibn Majah the chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Abu Huraira that the Messenger of Allah said, the hand is not to be cut off for stealing produce or the spadix of palm trees. 
Sunan Ibn Majah 2594 Reference 20 Hadith 62 Sunan Ibn Majah the chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Abdullah bin Safwan that his father slept in the mosque, using his upper wrap as a pillow, and it was taken from beneath his head. He brought the thief to the Prophet and the Prophet ordered that his hand be cut off. Safwan said, O Messenger of Allah, I did not want this. I give my upper wrap to him in charity. The Messenger of Allah said, why did you not give it to him before you brought him to me? Sunan Ibn Majah 2595 Reference 20 Hadith 63 Sunan Ibn Majah The chapters on legal punishments XOIT was narrated from Amr bin Shu'ayb, from his father, from his grandfather, that a man from Muzaina asked the Prophet about fruits. He said, what is taken from the tree and carried away, its value and the like of it along with it, meaning double its price must be paid. What is taken from the place where dates are dried, the penalty is cutting off the hand if the amount taken is equal to the price of a shield. But if the person eats it and does not take it away, there is no penalty. He said, What about the sheep taken from the pasture, O messenger of Allah? He said, The thief must pay double its price and be punished, and if it was in the pen then his hand should be cut off, if what was taken was worth the price of a shield. Sunan Ibn Majah 2596 Reference 20 Hadith 64 Sunan Ibn Majah The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Ishaq bin Abu Talha. I heard Abu Mundir the freed slave of Abu Dair, say that Abu Umayyah narrated to him, that a thief was brought to the Messenger of Allah and he admitted his crime, although the stolen goods were not found with him. The Messenger of Allah said, I do not think you stole them. He said, Yes I did. Then he said, Again, I do not think that you stole them. And he said, Yes I did. Then he ordered that his hand be cut off. The Prophet say, I seek Allah's forgiveness and I repent to him. So he, the thief, said, I seek Allah's forgiveness and I repent to him. He, the Prophet said twice, O Allah, accept his repentance. Sunan Ibn Majah 2597 Reference 20 Hadith 65 Sunan Ibn Majah the chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Abdul Jabbar bin Whale that his father said, A woman was coerced, that is, raped. During the time of Messenger of Allah he waived the legal punishment for her and carried it out on the one who had attacked her, but he, the narrator, did not say that he rules that she should be given a bridal money. Sunan Ibn Majah 2598 Reference 20 Hadith 66 Sunan Ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Ibn Abbas that the Messenger of Allah said, Do not carry out the legal punishment in the mosque. Sunan Ibn Majah 2599 Reference 20 Hadith 67 Sunan Ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments Amr bin Shu'ayb narrated from his father, from his grandfather, that, the Messenger of Allah forbade lashing for the legal punishment in the mosques. Sunan Ibn Majah 2600 Reference 20 Hadith 68 Sunan Ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Abu Burda bin Niyar that the Messenger of Allah used to say, No one should be given more than ten lashes, except in the case of one of the legal punishments of Allah, SWT. Sunan Ibn Majah 2601 Reference 20 Hadith 69 Sunan Ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Abu Huraira that the Messenger of Allah said, Do not punish with more than ten whips. Sunan Ibn Majah 2602 Reference 20 Hadith 70 Sunan Ibn Majah. 
The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Ubida bin Samit that the messenger of Allah said, Whoever among you undergoes a had, his punishment has been brought forward, and it is an expiation for him otherwise his case rests with Allah. Sunan ibn Majah 2603 Reference 20 Hadith 71 Sunan ibn Majah the chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Ali that the Messenger of Allah said, Whoever commits a sin in this world and is punished for it, Allah, STW, is too just to repeat the punishment for his slave, in the hereafter. And whoever commits a sin in this world and Allah conceals him, Allah is too generous to go back to something that he has pardoned. Sunan ibn Majah 2604 Reference 20 Hadith 72 Sunan ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Abu Huraira that Sa'd bin Ubada al-Ansari said shocked face, Messenger of Allah if a man finds another man with his wife, should he kill him? The Messenger of Allah said, Number. Sa'd said, Yes he should by the one who honored you with the truth. The Messenger of Allah said, Listen to what your leader says. Sunan ibn Majah 2605 Reference 20 Hadith 73 Sunan ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated that Salama bin Muhabik said. When the verse of legal punishments was revealed, it was said to Abu Thabit Sa'd bin Ubadah, who was a jealous man. If you found another man with your wife, what would you do? He said, I would strike them both wife the sword. Do you think I should wait until I bring four, witness, and he has satisfied himself and gone away? Or should I say I saw such and such, and you will carry out the legal punishment punishment on me, for slander, and never accept my testimony thereafter? Mention of that was made to the prophet and he said, the sword is sufficient as a witness. Then he said, No, on second thought, I am afraid that the drunkard and the jealous would pursue that. Daif. Abu Abdullah, meaning Ibn Majah, said, I heard Abu Zura saying, This is a hadith of Ali bin Muhammad peace be upon him at Tanafi C. I did not hear it from him. Sunan Ibn Majah 2606 Reference 20 Hadith 74 Sunan ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated that Bara bin Azib said, My maternal uncle passed by me. One of the narrators, Hushaym named him in his narration as Harith bin Amr, and the Prophet had given him a banner to carry. I said to him, Where are you going? He said, The Messenger of Allah has sent me to a man who married his father's wife after he died, and has commanded me to strike his neck that is execute him. Sunan ibn Majah 2607 Reference 20 Hadith 75 Sunan ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Muawiyah bin Korah that his father said, The Messenger of Allah sent me to a man who had married his father's wife after he died, to strike his neck, execute him, and confiscate his wealth. Sunan ibn Majah 2608 Reference 20 Hadith 76 Sunan ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Ibn Abbas that the Messenger of Allah said, Whoever claims to belong to someone other than his father, or, a freed slave, who claims that his wallah is for other than his real master, the curse of Allah, SWT, the angels and all the people will be upon him. Sunan ibn Majah 2609 Reference 20 Hadith 77 Sunan ibn Majah. The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated that Abu Uthman Nadi said, I heard Sa'd and Abu Bakr both say that they heard directly from Muhammad peace be upon him saying it and memorized. Whoever claims to belong to someone other than his father knowing that he is not his father, paradise will be forbidden to him. Sunan ibn Majah 2610 Reference 20 Hadith 78 Sunan ibn Majah. 
The chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Abdullah bin Amr that the Messenger of Allah said, Whoever claims to belong to someone other than his father will not smell the fragrance of paradise, even though its fragrance may be detected from a distance of 500 years. Sunan ibn Majah 2611 Reference 20 Hadith 79 Sunan ibn Majah the chapters on legal punishments Muslim bin Haisam narrated from Ashath bin Qais who said, I came to the Messenger of Allah with a delegation from Kinda, and they thought that I was the best of them. I said, O Messenger of Allah are you not from among us? He said, We are the tribe of Banu Nader bin Kanana, and we do not attribute ourselves to our mother and we do not deny our forefathers. He said, Ashaf bin Qais used to say, If any man is brought to me who suggests that a man from Quraysh does not belong to Nader bin Kanana, I would carry out the legal punishment, for slander, on him. Sunan ibn Majah 2612 Reference 20 Hadith 80 Sunan ibn Majah The chapters on legal punishment Safwan bin Umayyah said, we were with the Messenger of Allah and Amr bin Mora came and said, O Messenger of Allah, Allah, SWT, has decreed that I be doomed, and he has not guided me to earn a living except by beating my tambourine with my hand. Give me permission to sing without doing anything immoral. The Messenger of Allah said, I will not give you permission, or honor you nor give you, what you want. You are lying, O enemy of Allah. Allah, SWT, has granted you a good, lawful provision, but you have chosen the provision that Allah, SWT, has forbidden to you instead of that which he has permitted. If I had warned you before, I would have done such and such to you. Get away from me and repent to Allah, SWT. If you do that again, after this warning, I will give you a painful beating and shave your head, to make an example of you and I will banish you from among your people, and tell the young men of al Madinah to come and take your goods. Amr stood up, suffering grief and humiliation Sunan ibn Majah 2613 Reference 20 Hadith 81 Sunan ibn Majah The chapters on legal punishments that is known only to Allah, SWT. When he went away, the Prophet said, Those sinners, Whoever among them dies without having repented, Allah, SWT, will gather him on the day of resurrection just as he was in this world, effeminate and naked, with not even a piece of cloth to conceal him from the people. Every time he gets up, he will fall to the ground. Sunan ibn Majah 2613 Reference 20 Hadith 81 Sunan ibn Majah the chapters on legal punishments it was narrated from Umm Salama that the Prophet entered upon her, and heard an effeminate man saying to Abdullah bin Abu Umayyah, If Allah enable us to conquer Taif tomorrow, I will show you a woman who comes in on four, roll of fat, and goes out on eight. The Prophet said, Throw them out of your houses. Sunan ibn Majah 2614 Reference 20 Hadith 82